Welcome back to our discussion, How to Best Leverage Your Data for Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning, sponsored by Hitachi Ventara Federal here on Federal News Network. My guest today is Gary Hicks, the Chief Technology Officer for Hitachi Ventara Federal. I'm Tom Temin. And let's talk more about the idea of that metadata store, if you will, versus yeah. the data itself and how the best way to kind of stage or architect that is such that you avoid too much duplication of effort, too much duplication of data, yet you get that fast access. And also the idea of a single source of truth idea so that when, you know, when data gets duplicated, yeah. that doesn't mean all 12 copies end up the same a month later. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I think one of the things is people, I think when kind of lay people think about, you know, uh, AI, ML, big data, just, just data analytics, they think you're always looking at that specific piece of data. And you're many times not, you're looking at the characteristics, when it was it created, who created it, what application created it, um, even custom metadata as it kind of infuses it, uh, you know, uh, we, how many times has it been accessed? The, you know, there's a, just a plethora of, of metadata that you can associate with it that helps you inform kind of the characteristics of that data, the, the true meaning behind what does it do? And, and I think the AIML uses that metadata most of the often. So what you wanna do is make sure that you have a solution because some of the solutions as they kind of develop that, uh, we talk about archiving it, that, that data archiving it, but keeping it, the metadata close. What you want is a solution that keeps that metadata really localized where you can quickly access it and you're not pulling it back from the cloud. Because um, a lot of people use cloud for storage, but it has some challenges from a performance perspective, but also a cost perspective. If I have to pull that object, that data down every time I want to look at it, it, it's going to become very expensive very quickly. Um, so I think that's one of the key areas to look at when you're building that solution is, is, is that metadata locally accessible or, or locally accessible wherever my compute and those models are running. And does the storage makeup have to do with this? Can that play into how you set it all up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so there's different features anytime you kind of start to look at, you know, file solutions. And then we briefly touched on it before, you know, file solutions of yesterday were, uh, have really been challenged to do kind of this global data access where I need to get high speed access to every client that's using it. And they may be, and they're, they're mo many times using different data, but having it all co coalesced into that single infrastructure really makes it more beneficial to your data management uh, characteristics because what we would have done in the past is we would have put traditional NAS or those types of solutions out there. And then we would have been challenged to copy all that data around. And now we begin to look at, okay, which day is the right data? Have I changed it? Have I modified it? Have I, and in many cases, maybe I improved it and want to use it over here. So this concept of this parallel file system or this global data store really improves the ability of not only, uh, time to value of your data and your processing your models, but really better, better that data sharing to make sure that everyone has kind of access to that one true data and metadata as well. Traditional file solutions didn't always have the most robust uh, metadata either. Uh, it, it was kind of rele relegated to when was this created and when was the last time it was modified? That, that was kind of the extent of metadata a lot of times and who owned it. Um, but with these newer file-based solutions, we can really expand that metadata universe. It's almost like the old PowerPoint presentation version problem, yeah. blown up to uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning scale. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And 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 we can do as we kind of look at these uh, file, these new parallel file system solutions. You can do a lot of things with it that you could do. You know, you, you talk about versioning. Like we can take snapshots of this entire data store and very quickly spin it up at another site, another cloud, whatever it may be to do that data sharing and then integrate them back. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's definitely kind of that. Uh, we always had challenges with these solutions with, uh, with file locking and things of that nature. These newer solutions have addressed a lot of that um, where you don't have, you know, hey, I have a conflict. Two people have the same file open. Which one is the, the one true file? 
All right. And so you offer that service. Uh, that sounds like almost parallel access methodology as a service. And maybe Correct. describe how your solution works. What does it look like? Yeah, so 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 really, the way the solution works is it, it it is a global parallel file system that operates at high speed. And what we do is we take an approach where ten to twenty percent of your data set is this concept of hot data, um, including the metadata. We keep all the metadata up at that hot tier. Things you're actively working with. The other eighty percent of your data that you're probably not accessing them as much or or you don't need as quick access, we actually tier that, if you will, down to an object store. We, they're still fundamentally tied together in a unified namespace where all that data is accessible and you know, you think of it as a massive filing cabinet. Um, but what we do is we move it down to a cheaper tier of storage, still accessible, still quick, relatively quick to pull back, but all that hot data, that metadata is riding on uh, NVMe storage, which is, really the kind of the fastest level of storage that we have today. So it's almost a CPU direct access sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually, it, it actually can do a GPU direct. We have a lot of customers looking at their AI ML models with GPUs, the graphic processing units, and we support GPU direct where it can actually not traverse that to go actually between buffers um, and, and provide that high speed data access. And if you have different tiers, say, so a lower cost tier might be disk storage, for example, I'm presuming you're not as low as tape anymore. <laughs> no, 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 we, we, we don't do tape anymore, but, but we do have um, slower spinning disks. So we still sell a lot of spinning disks. So what we have is a near line, what most people would call near line storage. Um, but we've become very efficient at erasure coding and technologies of that type where we have a very high reliability to the point of 15 nines, but it's very cheap and deep um, and, and is very efficient at the what it does um, for long-term storage and, and can scale to uh, zettabytes or even you know things of that nature, that, of that scale with this solution. And to the user, it looks like one logical set of data, regardless of what the storage hierarchy underneath that is. Correct. It, it just looks like a file system. As they go in and manipulate that data, it, it just looks like a typical file system that would, they would mount on their clients. Um, and, it, and it supports typical file-based technologies like the older NFS um, and SIFs. But a lot of these newer solutions and products really want that direct access to the data over a posit. And it has a POSIX-based uh, file system or agent. Sure. And if a given, say, as you mentioned, 20% of the data needs to be in the hot zone, you know, available to that GPU instantaneously, as your requirements change, as the work you're doing changes, does the intelligence in the system enable that 20% to change depending on the changing needs? <clears throat> so things go back maybe to the disk. Yeah. So, so the data kind of, as it, it understands the activity of the data and it'll move it up and down, but as part of our design of this solution, we'll work with customers to understand 20% may not be the right number, maybe it's 30, 50%. Um, we do that to, from a cost effective and performance characteristic to, so every, every environment is different, but 20, you know, it's the typical 80, 20 rule that everyone is, is used to kind of dealing with is, is, is our starting point. And how does it interact with commercial clouds that clients might be using? So it, it, this solution can run in the cloud, the object storage that does the secondary tiering can run in the cloud um, and, and, and any cloud really, any S, S3 target. Um, so it, it really is a robust solution that allows you a lot of flexibility for deciding where you're gonna host it, whether it's private on-prem up in the public cloud infrastructure or, or one of the government clouds. And it can be virtualized, I think you said, so that you can have yeah. multiple instances depending on what the requirement might be. Yeah, ab absolutely. So, so it, it, it's really flexible in the way that you want to deploy it. It, it does have that unified namespace, but you can do multi-tenancy within it. Um, it you know, it, it can connect to other data sources as well to assist with that uh, data ingestion, even if you will. And is it an application that people buy or is it something they can use as a service or all of you? So so all, all the above, I was going to say, we're, we're pretty flexible with the way that they would buy it. They could buy it either as you know, your typical, hey, I want to buy this software standard up on prem. Um, I need a, cl a cloud consumption model where we can do it as a service. 
uh, in, in one of the commercial clouds, we, we, can, we can definitely be very flexible with whatever makes the most sense for their approach. Um, I would say as data continues to grow, uh, the public cloud is attractive, but I think there's gonna be this tipping point where you have to operate in a hybrid environment from just from a cost effectiveness data security perspective. Yeah, so to summarize, this is really optimized for the AI ML imperative that so many agencies have. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and it's, it's something that we saw coming in the future, but we kind of, you know, as we discussed, you only typically saw it in HPC environments because they're the only ones that had those size data sets that, and that use case to really crunch that much data. But everyone has seen the availability and, and the importance of AI ML in, in future, moving into the future. All right, I'd like to thank today's guest. Gary Hicks is the Chief Technology Officer at Hitachi Ventara Federal. Great to have you with us today. Thanks, Tom. And I'm Tom Temin. You've been listening to Federal News Network. For more on this discussion, please visit federalnewsnetwork.com and search Hitachi Ventara Federal.